Hello, everyone, and welcome to Productivity Interviews. Today, we're interviewing Alison Donahue of Domino Thinking. Welcome, Alison. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Garland. It's a treat to talk to you. Yes, I'm really glad that you were able to make it, and I really enjoyed the last interview we did where you interviewed me, so I thought, Tur turnabout is fair place, and I get, <laughs> I get to grill you. So. Oh, thanks. Well, hopefully you didn't have a too bad of a grilling by me. You were so great, though. You have so much great information on um, scheduling and time and tips. It was, it was such a treat to talk to you. Oh, well, thank you. So let's get started by letting our viewers know, uh, maybe you can give me a 30-second overview of what you do. Oh, I do um, probably far too many things. <laughs> I own a house painting company. That's my, uh, but I'm transitioning out of it. I've had it for 20 years and my son is now taking it over. So it's coming with all sorts of unique, um, challenging problems. Um, and I'm working mostly on my domino thinking company where I challenge people to think about what they think about. I have a radio show. I'm a speaker. I have an off, I have a book out international bestseller and uh, yeah, mostly though, I just want people to think. <laughs> Wow. I, I, I think you may have a little too much on your plate between you know, uh, a painting company and, and you know, a best-selling book and, <laughs> every, and all you know, radio hosts and everything else. So it's, it's good that you are passing some off, though, that your, son, your son's taking that over. That, so. Yeah. Well, and I think it's one of those things, like when, we, when we're entrepreneurs, it swells and it narrows and it swells and it narrows. And, and so when transitioning with my son, taking things over, it has swelled a bit because um, it flows into other things and we're learning new things and taking courses to adapt and all of that. So, yeah, I suspect by this time next year, I will be a little less busy. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Maybe we'll interview you again and see what's <laughs> on what's happening. So, so yeah, um, what happened in your career where you realized you suddenly had to take your, your productivity a lot more seriously? Uh, well, at the beginning, way back on my house painting company, it was, um, I was a one man show. And so I did everything. And so, and I was a single parent. And so, um, right from the get-go, I think I really grasped the productivity thing, uh, that organization. You know, I had to get them to soccer class. And, you know, and lots of moms know this stuff too, and dads probably as well. I don't know. I'm not a dad. Um, but it's that how do you fit everything into a day? And then how do you become efficient at it? And so as I hired more staff, I understood the, the necessity to become more efficient and more efficient all the time. So once you realize this, how did you learn about productivity? What, what steps did you take to get better? <laughs> well, sadly, I didn't have you back then. <laughs> um, I, trial and error, unfortunately. Um, you know, we're talking, when I started this 20 years ago, uh, there wasn't, the, the, nobody had email. I had to hand deliver my estimates. Um, and so it's a different world now. And a lot of it was just trial and error. And, and I think there are so many programs now that are probably really helpful to a lot of people that are, that are readily available. But, you know, it's a really good point about the experimentation and trial and error, because with many of my coaching clients, I find that we, we try something. And if that didn't, if that didn't get the result we wanted, we try something else. And, and people are too worried about the failure of it to, to realize that this is how you find out failures feedback by, yeah. by trying this and oh, that that cratered spectacularly uh, <laughs> not to do that next time, not, not to book three painting paintings on the same weekend or something. <laughs> or, you know, yeah. So that, now we know. And, and really that experimentation is part of that process of, yeah. of learning, becoming more productive. So. Well, and the fallout of not being organized, not having good time management is, um, is massive over time. You know, when you think that you upset a customer and then you upset another one and you upset another one and you upset another one because you just weren't organized, you didn't have good time management, um, the cost, the, those hidden costs, things that you may never realize are huge. And the reputation can get out there as well. I mean, especially with social media now, at least it wasn't as bad when you first started. <laughs> People couldn't go out there on a, on, you know, they had to get up in a soapbox and yell that, you know, this is a really bad company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, it's out there and p other people pick up on it and suddenly it's gone viral and, and yeah. doing damage control which mm. is really difficult uh, online. for sure so if you if you could only give one tip to our audience like what's what's that, the biggest uh, productivity tip you could give the one that's had the most impact for you oh uh, well I'm still a little old-fashioned I like a list <laughs> 
yeah, I've tried so many computer programs um, and a list is really what works best for me. So my advice would be like what you were saying is find something. I don't care what it is, find something uh, because it just changes your whole world when you're organized and you have a process that works and it's going to be different for everybody. And, you know, for many people, like sometimes the software can get in the way. It, it can be complicated. You're learning is something new. A, a simple list, most of us know how to write it down and, and how to do that. Except, mm-hmm. except in my case, I can't read my handwriting. So <laughs> my list well, needs, yeah, needs to I be in an app or type because I'm going, what am I supposed to do? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know it was important. Well, well, and-, <laughs> and I've got it marked number one, right? <laughs> <laughs> it must have been important. But yeah, really? a, a simple list where you write out uh, and, and mark them by priority, maybe use a highlight or even another color or write numbers next yeah. to them. I used to do that. And then at the end of the day, you just carry everything forward to a list. It, it's, it's very powerful and it works. Sometimes I know people find too when they work with an analog system where you're handwriting instead of typing uh, and being in the computer, sometimes people remember better as well, I find. Mm, Yeah. Well, and I'm super tactile. So I like that thinking, writing connection Um, all through university. That was what got me through it. Certainly wasn't studying. (laughs) Um, Right. Right. And so it's, again, it's that learning of that style that's going to work. And, and for me, online programs, I I get challenged with them because I'm such a squirrel, right? Like I'm like, Oh, squirrel moment. Oh, what's over here. And then I get a message if I'm on my phone checking my list and, and then I feel like I have to, and that pulls me off course all the time. So list, yeah. there's no interruption. Yeah. And, and, and that sort of brings us to, to, I guess, another question is how do you keep from being distracted? And I guess one way is to keep your list off of, off of your phone or off of your computer. Yeah. Because I have, I, you know, I get so many text messages and emails and, and like probably most people, like I, I probably get a couple hundred emails a day. Um, regarding like, just such a variety of different things, plus this text messaging and there's LinkedIn messages and there's um, or Facebook. I'm just, it's everywhere people are trying to connect. And so for me, when I have to actually get down to task, um, those things have to just get shut off. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I find I tend to work in blocks too. Like I will, ch- I do check my email regularly a couple times a day, at least I reply to everybody within one business day, but I don't always have it open. I don't always have Facebook open or yeah. Skype. So when I'm continually yeah. getting those messages because as you say it, it's so easy to get distracted. You know, you're, you're trying to write your next book or your, first <laughs> book. in my case it would be for my first book. Oh, um, exciting. All of a sudden you'd be, uh, oh, okay, uh, somebody, and, and often the questions are not that important, or it was a newsletter that came in. It wasn't even anything high priority. It was yeah. relatively minor, and yet you you took that deep focus you had, and you blew it, broke it entirely just to answer something really tiny. So, Yeah, yeah, and then you answer that tiny thing, and then you're like, oh, I should go do this, and while I'm up, I should do this, and maybe there's this, and I have my email open. I should just check a couple more, or email that other person that's not really important, but I should do it anyway, and so it's that slippery slope that is just so dangerous. And then an hour in, you're like, whoa, I'm supposed to be writing my book. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like, oh, that will only take a minute. I'm just going to answer these two emails. <laughs> There's the no time. such thing. Well, in, in our in our household, I mean, I've had that issue too, where I said, oh, do you want to go out for a walk when I'm going out to lunch? Oh, yeah, I'll just go answer a couple of emails first. Well, 30, 20 minutes later, the, the other person's not that. So I've learned that I just go for my walk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm out, yeah. I'm done, walk, and then I'm going to be going to be productive when I get back. Yeah. So any well, other the email will be there. When you get yeah, back, the email, email will, will still be there. be there and the world will not come to an end. The world won't come to an end. Everybody can be answered within a business day or so, and they're all going to be happy. But somehow yeah. you're right. When we know we've got mail, there's just that, it, you know, it just wants you to drags your focus over. It's, mm-hmm. it's like, it could be really important. I should go check. It could be my publisher with a big new book deal. And you know, it's usually not. It's not. No. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's the new ringing phone. You know, yes. it's like back in the day, like when your house phone rang, you just ran, what, drop what you're doing and ran to answer right. it, right? Um, and I think it's become that, all, all of it, like not, you know, obviously our cell phones are ringing, but all of those bells and whistles going off and they just, we're so, Pavlov's dog, we're so conditioned to respond. 
I know. Well, it's funny too, because I, I know a lot of people are really hot about uh, the, the software program Slack, which gives, which gives teams a way to, to message each other back and forth. And, and I mean, and the tool has its uses, but it's one more channel. Like now all of a sudden, instead of just email, just phone, yeah. just Skype messages, you're also getting Slack messages. And so, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Well, and that's another thing I do too. Like if somebody connects with me on LinkedIn, I usually say, Hey, can you shoot me off an email? Um, because for me, compartmentalizing emails is a lot easier. Um, I don't lose them because I keep them, if they're actionable, I keep them in a certain spot. Whereas I don't find I can do the same thing with Facebook Messenger. Sort of once it goes, it just sort of gets lost into that whole thing. Same with LinkedIn, all of those. Um, Now I know people who use it very, very effectively, which comes back to your point, find what works. Yeah. And email, as you, you know, as you're right, you can filter it. You can put it into certain folders. You can even automate what folders it goes into. You can drag it into yeah. a high priority folder or a follow up next week folder or yeah. there's different ways of dealing with it that, mm-hmm. that tools like LinkedIn and Skype, you know, messaging just don't, don't have. And, and <laughs> yeah, that, that way e- emails yeah. quite robust. Like a lot of people are, keep saying email's dead, but email is still the way most people do business. And it's still that one area everybody goes to every morning. They open their yeah. inbox and, yeah. and that's where they go. Whereas Facebook Messenger, I mean, for personal stuff, yeah, people use it a lot, but not, not so much for business and things. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I think it comes down to training people how to connect, right? Like mm-hmm. it's that while there's still room for understanding that they might want to stay connected on LinkedIn and then you sort of find that middle ground. Uh, but I try to filter everything into my email because um, that's my second favorite thing after lists right, <laughs> for right. organization. Well, and it's interesting because I use LinkedIn more like a Rolodex. Just do I, okay, I need a graphic designer. Who do, who's in my contacts? Who's a graphic uh, designer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or I'm going to be traveling to a different city. Uh, who, what potential clients could I connect with in that city? So that's mm-hmm. what LinkedIn is great for. And, and, but then if I've got their email address, I would probably send them an email instead of, because of, usually their contact information shows. If I only have a LinkedIn message, then yes, I would send them a, a LinkedIn message. But, but mm-hmm. yes, email would be my first, my first yeah. choice in that case. Interestingly enough, some years ago, the telephone was a really important business tool to me. And now I think I could actually cancel my phone number and I don't think I'd notice the difference because wow. I get almost no phone calls now. They're almost all spam, the ones I get. <laughs> What? You haven't paid your taxes and the police are coming to arrest I, you? I know, yes. <laughs> and, and I'm in a different country than, 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 than the taxes are from. What a surprise. I, I owe taxes in the U.S. and I'm in Canada. Hmm, that's kind of weird. Mm, but, yeah, a little bit. Um, I, and then there's tons of it. And, or, or I'll register a new domain name and I'll get like 10, 10 web developers calling me from India over the next week offering their web services. And, and, they, and you know, if they'd at least do a better job on it, like if they would at least look at my existing website to see what's there or offer me something. I mean, if the right person called with a search engine optimization package, you said, you know, Garland, I looked at your website. I noticed you're not number one for time management coach. And that has thousands of searches a month. Here's how we would get you there. I might listen. Instead, it's like, oh, we do this. We get you number one in Google. And Mm -hmm. they haven't even, I can't even tell if they've looked at my website, right? Yeah, like maybe you are already number one in Google. And I am for many keywords, but there's so, no, yeah, yeah, there's no actual looking. So when I approach a client, I've approached where I've read their website. I know what their business is about. I have a good idea what some of their needs are. And then I, when I contact them, I'm contacting them with something that makes sense instead of just mm-hmm. spam emails. So, so yeah, and, that's and, called good business. I think me? that's called good business. Yeah. Well, it's called <laughs> understanding your customers, providing value, um, yeah. make selling pro- there's all sorts of aspects you work into that instead mm-hmm. of just hitting everybody and hoping something's going to stick. So yeah. Yeah. So, sure. Yeah. So that, that's interesting. The distractions that you, you run everything through email is a way of doing things there and the distractions uh, by keeping things on a, on an analog basis by writing uh, yeah. works for those of us with good handwriting, but some yeah, <laughs> doesn't work as well. So yeah. And it's but, also, and I, lists work different for everybody too, right? Like some people, like I had somebody trying to get me to do a certain list on Excel and I'm like, no, like, it's not going to work. So I compartmentalize like, so my list has boxes on it. And so I know what I have time for and what box I can get done. So I'll have like a box of phone calls and I know I have an hour and I can get through a bunch of phone calls. So I'll maybe just finish that box and everything in that box. Right. So right. really just finding, find something, anything, find it. Well, and that's what I tell people. Like pe- people are often expecting, oh, Garland's going to s- force me to use this piece of software or, or this <laughs> tool. And 
there's so many great pieces of software, productivity software and tools out there. There's no one tool that does everything that mm -hmm. is right for everyone. And everybody's different. My wife's very visual in, in some of the stuff that she works with. And I'm more list and index um, uh, oriented. And, and so there's a different thing that works for, every, for everybody. And mm -hmm. I work with people to find what works for them. That's, that's the key thing there. Yeah. Uh, you know, is to find that, that list system that, that works, uh, that works very well. How do you, how do you find that? Do you take lists as well when you're out? Like if you're away from your desk or? Oh, uh, sometimes I'll send myself emails. <laughs> so if, um, because I don't like carrying my list around with me, uh, yeah, I usually know what's on it. So at the beginning of the day, I sort of, I know these are the things I have to do. I have to get done. And then I collect everything I need to do if I have to leave my office. Um, but if I'm out and I'm like, oh, don't forget to call somebody, I will send myself an email because then that's my second form and everything gets compartmentalized yeah. through that. And that works too. And again, as you say, a person just needs a system that works. Um, and yeah. the, the best, most expensive, fantastic system in the world won't work if you and your team aren't, aren't embracing it and aren't actually yeah. using everyday productivity. Yeah. And I've had that happen. I had a client who spent hours and hours getting everything perfect in his in his time management system and productivity system uh but of course by the time he'd done that the tasks were three months out of date and none of them had been done <laughs> because he had not yet brought his team on board or instead i would have launched messy i would have said this is the new system let's launch messy let's let's break it let's find out all the yeah, offers. fail fast but at least we're working on the system and working in the tasks instead of creating this lovely perfectly crafted um nested you know we're subtasks tasks and subtasks and categories <laughs> it was yeah, beautiful that breaks my brain like uh, that to me I, it's that squirrel thing for me right like mm -hmm. i think it's beautiful when i see it in other people and i would love to be able to be that guy who could have that task subtask task sub, but um, for me, it's tough. The, the downside, though, to the list, and I think it's always really important that when we look at uh, something that works, we also consider the downside, is my assistant doesn't always know what's on my list. So that, she doesn't always know what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. yeah the system I use, uh, like I, I use productivity systems where I can actually assign tasks to my team, as, you know, to mm -hmm. my um, and I don't, it's not like I have a whole bunch of people working. I work from a home office, but I actually have freelancers, like virtual assistants and other people that work. And so the system I use does let me delegate to them. So I can see at a glance what each one of them is working on. And, mm. and that does help. The other benefit of, of a app or, or software is that if I do happen to be out for a walk and I think, oh, I forgot to do this, I can actually pull up the app on my phone and I can just add the task there or, or mm -hmm. change date or something so so there's some benefits to it but again um it's it's not worth abandoning a system that works just for that benefit if, if the benefits not, mm -hmm. not strong enough and i think sometimes there's systems within systems that work right, right. so uh at some point my I, my list only works for me and then i have to incorporate a system so that it works for my assistant and it works for my staff um in a way that's more effective yeah, and my wife and I started doing that with Google Calendar, where I had my Google Calendar, and she knew what she was doing this week, but we didn't together know what we're doing, and all of a sudden, I'd find out that a day when I thought I would, like, we we um, share one car, because I work from, both of us kind of work from home, so we don't need two vehicles, but on mm. the day when I was going to go meet a client somewhere for coffee, she had already booked to take the car in for an oil change or something. <laughs> Oops. So we found we had to start a shared and, and a shared Google calendar works brilliant for it because uh, her, the item she's put on the calendar, just a different color than mine's. But mm -hmm. so I know it doesn't affect me. So for yeah. example, an interview like this, which is on my calendar, doesn't affect her, but she knows that I'm not available at that point. If she wanted to come and ask me questions or if she wanted to um, get my help to go out, maybe look at a new computer for her or mm -hmm. something like that, that she knows yeah. I'm not available. So, so yeah. it really helps that we're able to coordinate. The that. calendars are amazing. Like I live and die by mine. You know, my assistant, um, we use iCal, um, but my assistant has access to it and my son does. And so for that painting end of it, everything goes in there and then they see what I'm doing for domino thinking and when, I, when I'm on a call with you and when not to call me and all those sorts of things. So uh, yeah, that's, those are my top three, email calendar and old, old school writing. And it's, yeah. it's all about how you use it. It's not what the system is. It's about that commitment that this is the system. If you try to do a bit of everything, like try to remember in your head what you're doing, you have a few things in an app, you have a few things on a list, and you're split between the three, then yeah. things start, start dropping through some. And know, we're never as good in our head as we think we are. <laughs> no, 
And, and you know, I learned that long ago. Like I keep nothing in my head. There's nothing there. My head's empty. <laughs> <laughs> not my clients. I'll teach you to be empty headed like me because everything I have goes into systems. Like mm-hmm. um, a new I- an idea for a new video. I have an editorial calendar. I drop n- new ideas for, for new articles, for new videos. I, I capture all that stuff because I, if, I, if I try to remember, oh, I had that great idea an hour yeah. ago for a new video. What was that again? And it's going to be gone because. Yeah. Um, and what app I is that? No brain or just no brain or what it is. And what app is that that you use for that? Oh my goodness. Uh, I use a ton of different things, but the one I'm using right now is Airtable. Okay. Are you, are you familiar with it? No. Airtable is um, a really neat online tool. Think of it as a spreadsheet meets a database. Mm. Uh, and what you can do with it is you can actually set up menus within it. So let's say, for example, so you can use it for anything because it's that flexible. So Airtable is now my CRM, like my customer relationship manager. I can put people's names and where they're at, even what time zones they're in and stuff like that. And, mm. and what we talked to last. I have an editorial calendar and I just sort of capture them at the idea stage. Just drop every idea I have and then I categorize it categorize it according to type. Is this one that needs a whole presentation or is this an idea for an interview or is this an idea just for a really short, uh, I do a productivity walk where I just talk about a topic while I walk and I just shoot myself with a camera, you know, while I'm doing it. So I call it my productivity walk. And so these are usually short topics. So, but I just differentiate, okay, with which category does it go in? So if I'm going to go out for my walk at lunch today, I'll look at my list and say, which one do I feel like doing today? and just grab it and, and go do it. Mm-hmm. And that's worked really well. Like I used to do a video about every two or three months. <laughs> I'd maybe one, I, I would usually get at least one article done a month, but yeah. I'm up to the point now where I'm, I, I'm publishing two videos a week and nice. I'll probably hit three over the next few weeks. I've actually got about six to eight videos currently in the can that need, just needs a bit of editing and titles and things like that. So that's how, yeah. yeah. So, um, and, and again, it's, it doesn't matter what the tool is. I could do the same thing in a, in a notebook, a handwritten notebook. I could do the same thing in OneNote. I could do it in, in a Santa or Basecamp or Trello or any of, any of the, the regular systems. But I just mm-hmm. find it really flexible for that. And it is nice because it does have a mobile app too. So if I'm out yeah. and have yeah. ideas. Yeah, it, it has to work, whatever you pick, right? Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. So what is one area of productivity you're still struggling with, Allison? Oh, I'm still, I have a squirrel brain. Okay. You know, when I haven't, um, it's just too easy for me to get distracted and and stay on course. That's definitely, um, yeah, I have a few time suckers in my day or because I work from home when I am at home, um, you know, FedEx shows up and then it's a distraction and I'm in the kitchen. I'm like, oh, maybe I should, but always bringing myself back to my desk and get going on it. I think that's a challenge. And um, and my days are never, um, static. Like my, my assistant's always throwing appointments in my day. So when I think I have half a day free an hour in, I don't. And right. so whatever I plan for that. So it's, I'm always readjusting, um, recalculating. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And that makes sense. One trick with that might be to set a block of time off that is just the assistant, like the assistant <laughs> can't, can't throw an appointment. In. Yeah. yeah. I've tried. <laughs> well, you know, but- you can beat assistants until they, until they <laughs> comply, right? <laughs> stop oh, paying them. They'll stop, they'll stop booking. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, um, because like with the painting, I'm still doing estimates and color consultations. Of course. Of course it's yeah. still that, oh, they didn't need one. Now they need one and we're painting tomorrow. So can you get there? Um, and then I just work later at night. Yeah. I have and part found, of that will be solved, I think, once your son's able to take over the rest, the rest of the aspects of the company. So Yeah. Because the days, like I do block off um, a couple of days for domino thinking and that it usually holds pretty well, but not always. <laughs> yeah, the uh, calendar software I use, like I can build in how much of a notice I want. You know, for example, mm-hmm. I don't want to have, like I wouldn't want another booking now five minutes after you and I are done because right. I, I need to reset. I need to take care of a few things. and, and Yeah. Don't want them that close, so I can say, okay, no more than an hour. Hour, you know, they have to be at least an hour apart. Mm-hmm. Another thing too is, I, I know the one I use also lets me set if I want four hours notice. So the idea is, I know then at one o'clock in the afternoon, I'm not going to suddenly get hit with a three or four o'clock appointment. So right, it, it, yeah, it, that's it, nice. All of those things help because we get so busy, we get stuck in our brain. Um, my one of my other favorite things is Acuity Scheduler. Yes, yes, it's it's a good one. 
I love it. It's just so easy. I'm sure there's lots out there. It's the one that I picked. Um, it was probably because it was the first one I stumbled across knowing right. me. Um, but scheduling because I have a radio show and we're trying to get guests or I do things like this. Um, you know, it's so nice to have it all done automatically. It takes yeah, a while to set up, but long term. Thing. Yeah, because I have people booking, well, these interviews with me, but I also have people booking their coaching calls, you know, and usually mm -hmm. they've paid already for them, but they need to book a time. And it used to be a nightmare because I'd have clients in Australia and Europe. And uh. so I'd say, okay, how about, um, let's see, you know, Monday at four of my time, which might be Tuesday at ate their time and then they'd say well no how about when and we go yeah. back we go back and forth for weeks and wouldn't get an appointment now well and, like, and then that's the other point too right like um now you're getting if you're especially if you're doing it through text or email now it's popping up so now there's in your brain going oh i have to answer that because i don't want something else to get blocked during that time um and and so i think there's always this um urgency that we are creating when we do systems like that because we don't have a good system like you know acuity or calendar or whatever they, the other ones are um yeah. Yeah, uh, so much time got wasted think, uh, mine's acuity scheduling too yeah it, it's an excellent one i've used two or three and i think acuity is the one i've settled on at the moment but uh, yeah. yeah and it really uh made that the whole coat as a coach it just made it so much easier for yeah. me and, and, and yeah, now that i'm doing interviews i'm using it for people who are booking interview times with me as well so mm -hmm. So what used to take me an hour or more to set a time with a person, get their notes, get their bio, get their headshot, I don't even have to think about it anymore. I open my email, I'm like, oh, so-and-so booked an appointment, that's fantastic. And here's all their information, isn't that great? So that time-saving part, and, the, and I back up things really tight too, especially like when I'm out on the road, I, like I back up appointments so that I don't have 20 minutes where I'm driving and I don't, I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. So I always make sure I, I squish everything together on that end, um, which is different than what you're talking about with clients because you need that time to reframe. You need the time to take notes, to set mm -hmm. up, to send them links you talked yeah. about. Do that. It's different on an, an appointment when you're out. And I agree with you. I tend to put all my appointments together too. So if I have, if I have, take an afternoon and I just go out and do every possible appointment, so I don't have to go out again that week. Yeah and do it and, and squeeze in as many, as many as I can and just get doctor's appointments and dentist appointments and yeah. dropping pop, pop bottles off at the recycle or whatever you need to do. Whatever. To yeah. Them. And it's, a, it's amazing how much we can accomplish when, cause my son will say to me, you're not going to get all that done. I'm like, well, watch me. I can totally get it done because I'm organized. Right. And I, and I back it all up. And so it's, um, it's just boom, 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 it all gets done. And then he's like, you seriously got all that done? I'm like, dude, you need to rip a page out of my book. <laughs> and as he's getting older, he's getting a lot better. He sees the value in it and he's doing a lot better with it. But it's, it's, um, it's a process, I think, to get to that place where you realize it can't be all in your head. It needs to go on paper or on an app or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And, and the systems, like that's what I find is it's not, a, most of my clients are really brilliant, creative people. So it's not lack of intelligence that has mm -hmm. them behind your scrambling. It's, it's lack of systems. So and I, th that's what, one of the things I always say is, uh, p you know, people who are more successful than you are usually not any smarter than you. They're just, they just have better systems. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I always try to do things today to make my tomorrow easier. Right. Like that's, that's what I live by. Like what else can I take off my plate today? Because I don't know what disaster is going to happen tomorrow. Like, you know, there's all sorts of things. The hydro could go out, the cable could, uh, internet could go out. And now things I could have done yesterday, I didn't do, I put off and uh, now I can't do today because I have no internet or whatever the case may be. Yeah, and that's one of the difficulties with procrastination is, is mm -hmm. if you wait too long, uh, then all of a sudden, you, or, or another big project also hits and the one you've been putting off is now due. So yeah. now you've got two that are just too tight for the time frame. There's mm -hmm. no way you can handle yeah. it. Yeah, isn't there like a great, is it Eisenhower table or something about yeah, how? Yeah, the Eisenhower matrix has, has a way mm -hmm. of like using things that are ur urgent and not important and, and that kind of thing. So, and there's lots of, there's a ton of techniques. There's the getting things done, GTD uh, system, yeah. the po Pomodoro. I mean, and all these have elements of, of good, like they're all good techniques. Um, I tend to take the mixed martial arts approach to time management techniques where I steal from <laughs> <laughs> one. Well, I really like, I really love the idea of setting a 20, 30 minute timer and working that that's the Pomodoro technique. It works fantastic for me. So I steal that one, you know, so, yeah. so that's how I, how I work is I, cause I don't think any one system, like once again, they get kind of 
full of dogma and they force people into a certain way of working and thinking and not everybody works yeah. that way. So, well, and an app can only be so big, mm-hmm. right? So, I, you know, it's not reasonable to think that you're going to get all of your needs met in one place, in one fashion, and that other people are going to uh, coincide with that, right? Like it's work exactly the same way, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, this has been fantastic, Allison. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks. If our uh, viewers would like to learn more about you and what you do, uh, where would they go? Um, they can go to my website, dominothinking.com, and, uh, or they can send me an email, Allison with one L, A-L-I-S-O-N, at dominothinking.com, and I answer all of my emails, and I love hearing from people. So uh, those are the two best ways. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your productivity techniques and secrets with us uh, today. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. Being in touch with you in future. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll sign off now. All right, take care. Thank you.